When studying the nervous system, I thought it would be interesting to kind of integrate all the different levels of functioning of the nervous system. And I thought that it would generate more um, questions and interest if we started with the whole brain, with the, the parts that we kind of think we know about and that are um, you know, physical three-dimensional objects you can handle. So we started by dissecting the brain and learning about different functions of different parts of the brain and how those are localized and then kind of stepped back and went, went, went deeper into it and, and looked at how the brain is made up of neurons and how those, those individual neurons function together um, to form the circuitry of the brain. And so the spiker boxes helped us to look at the functioning of, of the neurons that make up our nervous system and our brain. Okay, a spiker box is a simple device that um, has a speaker that produces a sound when um, there's an electrical current that um, is produced between two electrodes. And you can put those electrodes into the leg of a cockroach um, because we don't mind sacrificing some cockroach legs for science. And you can detect um, the nerve impulses in the cockroach leg. And they will be manifest as um, little bursts of sound in the speaker on the spiker box. So in effect, you can hear the nerve impulses firing in the cockroach leg. Then you can use that to test different factors which might affect the um, firing of those nerve impulses. We've taken the current, um, the current from one of these legs, the stimulus, and we've helped it to move another cockroach. So. Some students decided that it would be really interesting to see if you could take one cockroach leg, stimulate that cockroach leg to, uh, to move, and they decided to see if they could then wire that leg um, to a second leg and get the second leg to respond to the uh, impulses from the first leg. And this was a, a project designed to look at how um, a neuroprosthetic could work so that you could actually kind of bridge the gap of, a, of an injury to um, nerves of the spinal cord um, through a, some type of a device like that. Um, another student group looked at um, whether nerve impulses were instantaneous or whether they have a measurable speed. And they used a worm because a worm is kind of a nice long linear thing that has a different type of neuron in it. They were able to actually measure the speed at which a nerve impulse passed from one part of the worm to another. Um, another student group just uh, looked at how uh, the amplitude and frequency of a signal affects the response in a cockroach leg. Yet another group uh, examined the effect of oxygen deprivation on nerve impulses. This inquiry process of asking questions and then testing them on natural things is central to the heart of science. So um, I thought my students would learn a lot more from doing that than they would from researching uh, the nervous system online or from uh, studying about it in a textbook. Um, this way they were actually doing the kinds of things that real scientists do.